Hey, this is OXDF, and today we've just finished Shoppy from Hack the Box, and there's a NoSQL injection in this uh, in, in a web application on Shoppy. And uh, I'm going to go back as root and take a look at the code, uh, understand where the injection is, understand what the injection does, uh, and then fix the injection so that the code's not vulnerable anymore. Um, we're going to use VS Code, and we're going to do the analysis and the changing, and we're going to do the uh, VS Code remoting using SSH. Um, to connect into the box and actually look at the code in on the box with VS Code. So um, I'll set that up in this video too. Um, hopefully it'll be fun. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I've got a root shell in this box already. Um, again, I've already rooted the box. I'll have a link to the blog post where I show all my steps to doing that uh, in this video. Um, and then I've got this web app right here. Um, I can try to log in with like uh, OXCF, OXCF, and uh, I get the wrong credentials here, um, but there's a bypass here. So if I do admin, Pipe, uh, close quote, pipe, pipe, A equals A, like that. I put whatever password I want in here, and I'm in as the end. Um, there's a second vulnerability in here. If I do the search for users, if I come here and do OXDF, I get nothing. If I do OXDF, pipe, pipe, oh, sorry, quote, pipe, pipe, same kind of thing, A equals A. Uh, I do get results right here. I can download export, and I got you know, the admin and Josh user. If I search for just admin, I will get just admin, but I got all the users basically. So um, that is the application. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the code itself in VS Code. Uh, we'll, we'll start here real quick. I can show you um, the data it's in. The code itself is in uh, Home Jaeger in this Shoppy app directory right here. Um, but again, there's not a lot of tools for this. There's not even Vim on this box. so. Um, I'm not going to look at it here. What I'm going to do is open up another window and run VS Code here. Um, and so if we're going to, VS Code can actually SSH into the box and um, edit as if it's on your box. And so to do that, one thing we're going to need to do is come over to extensions here and install the remote extension pack. Um, it's a little bit confusing because when you search for remote, there's four different things that are all from Microsoft. Um, and you might take a minute and be like, which of these am I supposed to do? And the real answer is if you hit install on one of these, um, I, think was, I thought maybe I, maybe it's if you hit install on this. Oh, okay, no. But if you hit remote install and remote SSH, uh, it's going to install all well, all three or four of them. Anyway, we're just going to install. We're going to install all of them. Um, let's see. So those are that's installed. We're good there. Now what we can do? Um, if we just come now, we can say uh, Control Shift P. And we have remote SSH connect to host. You could start, if that wasn't at the top of your list, you could, because I've recently used it, but you could, you know, you could start typing remote and it would filter down. Um, here it's going to ask you for like, so I could, what you want to do, I could say root at choppy.hackthebox because it's in my host file. Um, if I hit that, it's going to try to connect and it's going to pop, pop, pop and my pop a dialogue asking for my password. Um, I can come down here and click details and actually see it trying to do the connection here. And you can see it's uh, showing a password prompt. Um, we don't have a password for root. We just have a key. Um, so we'll hit escape here to cancel. We don't need this and we'll close the remote. Um, close this window in fact. And what we need to do is we need to set up what's called an SSH config. And so we're going to come here and we will do vim in my own home direct my own thing. We'll run this thing called config. And now this file is uh, formulated so that I can define uh, characteristics for an SSH connection. We'll call it the host name like copy. And then here we can say host name, whatever it gets right, capital M is copy.hack the box. I could also put 10, 10, 11, I think it's 180 in here if I wanted to. Um, now, what this is where I can also say identity file is keys ed 25519 underscore j. And that's just my generated uh, SSH key. Um, and then I also need to specify the user I want to connect as. In that case, it's root. So if I save this, now I can do something like on the command line, I can do SSH, if I can type SSH Shoppy, and it uses all that information to, to connect um, basically the same connection that I did up here with SSH dash I key root at Shoppy. Um, that's pretty cool. And but cooler is that now allows uh, VS Code to do the same thing. So Control Shift P, connect to remote host. It even shows me now because it, it reads my config file. It says Shop is an option. Do you want to connect there? And I say sure. Uh, we'll close the original, open this back up. Um, 
you can see it's connecting. So now it's doing this thing now where it's setting up SSH host Shopee. It's downloading VS Code Server. Um, it's going to take a second, and you can see it actually just changed to VS ser Code Server locally. The problem is on the, it tries to download the code it needs to run on the server side um, from the box. Well, Shopee can't connect to the internet because it's a hack the box machine. It's in the hack the box labs, um, and they don't have internet. Um, so now you can see now we're now we're copying VS Code Server to the host with SCP. Um, so we're putting that code up there, and once it gets up there and runs, um, it'll all be set up, and then we can connect to it uh, as needed. Um, this will take a lot less time uh, if the host you're connecting to is internet connected, um, just because you have, don't have to move files around on your local system. Um, but it doesn't take too long. Um, I'll probably speed the video up from here until it is done installing. All right, looks like it's finished. Um, if we come over here and click on uh, the files section, um, we don't have anything, but we can say open folder. And now here we are in Shopee. So we can say uh, home Jaeger. I don't know, we're, uh, we're cooking Jaeger, copy app. Whoa, how did I lose that? Try that again, take two. Home Jaeger, copy app right here. And we'll click OK. And now over here, it's connecting and you can see it's doing um, various SSH things. And now we've got that same directory showing up over here. Um, I can click on index.js and here it is as a file. Um, pretty, pretty nice. So let's take actually now we'll jump over to actually looking at this file, this uh, web server here. Um, if we go back up to the top, we'll see it um, is the Node.js application. It's running the Express framework. Um, nothing too exciting there. Um, it is using Express. It's using Cookie Parser. It's got a Mongo URI here. Um, it sets up some Mongo authentication data here. Interestingly, it removed the X powered by header. I'm not sure why it does that. Although I did know, you know, I did, I when I was running the box initially, I was wasn't sure what it was, and I didn't. There was no X powered by header, so I didn't know it was Express. Typically, with Express, it would say X powered by Express. Um, it's setting up the template engine here as EJS. Um, templates in general are just uh, here. We can go. Let's see, probably in views. Yeah. So here's like admin.ejs, and it's it's mostly just a bunch of HTML. But it allows it to put things like here's a for loop. So for each pro, you know, it's going to say for products dot length. And where do we where do we define products? Uh, we don't. Oh, sorry, we haven't defined products. But we say for products dot length, um, show them here. And then when we call this, we you know later, we'll see it later when we want to load this page. We say you know hey render this template and here's the products array, the products which is a list of um, objects for example. Um, and so that's what the templating kind of works looks like in this one. Um, now we start to define, um, you know, different uh, endpoints. So if we do git on the main thing, we're going to send file index.html. Uh, if we do git on admin, we're going to see if there's a session has a username. Um, otherwise, we're going to redirect to login. If it does, we're going to go to this products page with the admin you know, admin.ejs. Um, we will do this product.find. We'll get the products, and that's what we'll pass in. Um, there's the search users page. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. Here's the login page as a git where it just returns um, basically the, the view. Um, as a post, it handles the login. And again, we'll be coming back to that too. Um, and then at the end, it listens on port 3000. So that's really the whole application. Um, let's take a look at the injections here. So what it's doing here on admin search users is make sure that I'm logged in. If I'm not, it goes back to login. Makes sense. That's, that's good. Um, then it's going to say, uh, make sure there's a query. Um, otherwise, it just sends the search page. Um, then it's going to get the query server this dot username, and it's going to use that to build this query. You know, the where the query is going to this where string. So we're basically saying this dot username equals the username, and then we close the. You know, so there's the single quote and the close quote. Um, this is the insecure part. You don't you don't ever want to take user input. Use it to build a string and then pass that string as the query. You always want to pass the anything user input to you or anything you're really querying um, separately. And I'll, I'll show you how well, how we do that later. Um, it's going to do this user dot find on query. Now, what is user dot find? Um, it's actually defined up here in the schemas. Um, here's user js, and this is nice because what Mongoose allows you to do here is we are just going to define that a user has a username and a password, and then Basically, we now have this user object, which is a front end to the database, but we don't have to think of it as database queries. We can just say, 
um, you know, give, show me, show me the user that's like this, uh, show me the password, show me the user has this password, you know, that whatever you, the, you can make those queries, but you don't have to do it in like a SQL like way, um, although they are choosing to here. Um, so when we put um, the best way to do this, uh, can I open up a new file here? I can't do one type, perfect. Um, when we grab this, copy this and go over here and paste this here. And now when I pass in my query, so when I pass in my thing, we're, the username, what did I send? I sent uh, close quote, uh, yeah, close quote, type, type, or I said, I actually said, uh, this is, we'll say OXDF, type, type, A equals A, like that. And so what, it, what that really affects, effectively means that query becomes, grab this and put it on the next line, query becomes, with that username, we can get rid of these just appending here, and we can get rid of these here. I don't know why this just needs to be escaped. Let's get rid of it for the moment. It basically it says, get a username, get, you know, do a query where this.username equals OXDF or A equals A, which is gonna just be true. Um, and so now when we're able to, you know, send this, that's where we get our injection. Uh, the uh, login one is very similar. I guess we can take a quick look at that. Um, we, the only difference here is we, we take the password and we hash it with MD5 first to get past a test. And then we do the same thing. We build a string, this.username equals username, which was set up here. And this.password is passed to test. Um, and then we, we send that as a query. Um, so that we found the injections, we've seen how the injections work. Um, let's let's fix it. So we can go here. Let's do the one first. It'll be a little easier to start with this one. Um, we don't want to do this query here at all. Can I get in here? Yeah. We don't want to do this. Um, let's grab this and comment it out. Paste this here. You don't need to do. Uh, we don't need to do a where. What we really just want to do is we can actually put in here username. <laughs> And so like in this case, we want to do a query where username equals username. So we just do username equals, um, I guess it's rec dot query dot username like that. And that again, Mongo will handle this for us. We just say we, we want to define username there. And it, it was smart enough to fill username because it knew, you know, if I started typing something else here, what could I also, if I started saying like um, non existent, you can see, VS Code doesn't know how to fill that for me. And that's because in this user.js, it knows there's only username and password. So those are the things I can define here. But if I start typing password, it says, oh, do you, look, there's a property named password. Is that what you're looking for? Um, so if we do this and save this, um, go ahead and get a terminal. If we say new terminal, um, because we're SSH'd in, this is, gives is an SSH terminal right here. Um, we can do a PSAUX dub dub and grep for index.js. And we can see the node process that's running the website right now. Um, this is running with PM2, in, which means if I kill this process and I run again, you can see the same process is running basically instantly, but now with the new PID. So then it, we basically just restarted it by killing the old one. Um, and if we come back here now and we search for users, so we said uh, OXDF, uh, pipe, pipe, or type, close quote, pipe, pipe, probably really hard to see on the screen, but I'm. Um, I'll read it out loud. So OXDF, close quote, pipe, pipe, open quote, A, close quote, equals open quote, A. And then we get the close quote from the query. If we hit enter on this, we get no results. Um, and so we have effectively fixed our problem here. Um, we can do the same fix with the login page. Um, and it's going to be very similar. We'll come down here. Um, I think it's probably better practice, honestly, to just get the user and then check if that user's... Um, password hash matches your password hash, but we can, we'll go for the sake of simplicity, we'll do it here. We'll say, um, be clear, so we need username equals, and now we just want to actually make it equal to the variable username. Um, and then we want to say password equals, maybe, I mean, maybe we should be using three equals. Oh, not equals, we shouldn't be using equals at all. Ah, it, it's JSON, <laughs> that makes a lot more sense. Uh -oh brain part there um, password and then it is passed to test like that and we'll save this same kind of thing here we can uh, we can actually kill 2477 
make sure it's restarted. It is a new new server. Um, if we come over here, there's, this thing doesn't even have a logout button, I don't think. Um, I'll have to come inspect, storage, there's the cookie. Okay, if we refresh now, we're back at the login page. And if we do admin, close the quote, a equals a and some stuff, we get wrong credentials. So we've effectively fixed the application. Um, I'm gonna call the video here today. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully you learned something new and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.